top story. Former President Trump has been indicted by a New York grand jury. But will the legal turmoil here embolden America's adversaries like China and Russia? Rebecca Koffler is a strategic military analyst and author of Putin's playbook. She joins us now live. Rebecca, always great to talk to you. But tell us, you know, what is Putin thinking right now as he watches this whole, whole debacle unfold with this indictment of President Trump? Oh, Putin is elated, uh, Ashley, because effectively what's going on is the Democrats are using Putin's playbook to prevent former President Trump from running uh, for presidency in 2024. Look, as an immigrant from the Soviet Russia who fled communism, I don't recognize our country. It's frightening to me that what I'm seeing here is what was happening back in the Soviet Union. These are KGB tactics, and they're going to embolden Russia, China, Iran. These are our adversaries, uh, because they know that instead of paying attention to external threats, we are basically, you know, paying attention to infighting. We are destabilizing our own country by these sorts of Soviet tactics. I think that's the key point. I think this goes beyond Trump running and the view on the world stage as to what that means. I think this goes to what is that axis? Russia, mm -hmm. China, Iran, North Korea. What are they thinking when they see the rule of law crumble in our country and in their eyes embolden and sort of make them feel validated in their lack of a democratic rule of law in their nations. Exactly. Uh, what we should be projecting is that our country remains the country of freedom, freedom of the press, religion. Uh, we uphold the law, justice, and instead we are telegraphing to these dictators that we are no longer the country where the political opponents are free to run against the incumbent. I mean, this is what Putin does to his opponents. So a Russian, switching gears now, a Russian court arresting American Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershevik and ordering him to remain in their custody until May 29th on accusations of spying. But, you know, Rebecca, I really want you to unpack this statement from uh, the Kremlin. Uh, Kremlin officials say Gershevik was, quote, acting on instructions from the American side to collect information about the activities of one of the enterprises of the Russian military industrial complex that constantly constitutes a state secret. What do you make of that comment? Well, first of it, it's uh, likely a lie, right? Because the United States does not use journalistic cover to do espionage, to do intelligence work. Why? It's because if we did, that would jeopardize the lives of every American journalist across the globe. Um, so, the Russians are just building the case, an espionage case. They are designated this case as a top secret, so that they could exchange Evan Gershkovich for another person who is detained in Germany, Vadim Krasikov, who is a former FSB colonel and a contract assassin. So the Russians are building this case. What doesn't make sense to me, Ashley, is why Corinne Jean-Pierre, uh, yesterday during the White House briefing, threw Evan Gershkovich under the bus by not answering the question unequivocally that he was not working for the U.S. government. That I don't understand. Did the Biden administration incentivize this hostage diplomacy in light of how it handled the Victor Boot, Brittany Griner situation? Oh, absolutely. Uh, this is classic Putin's uh, playbook, using hostage diplomacy. They perfected it to the form of the statecraft. Why? It's because we have trained them, specifically the Biden administration's uh, administration, by exchanging high-value assets, like the merchant of death you just mentioned, uh, for people that are ordinary Americans, like, like Brittany Griner, right? And so that is why they keep doing it. It's it's very, it's very hard for us to deal with the situation, uh, Todd, is because we value every life. And for us to disabuse, to unteach Russians, uh, we would need to have one suffer for the team, right? And every life is valuable uh, for us, for, for Americans. And that is why it's very, very difficult to resolve this conundrum with the Russians. 
An American journalist has not been detained on spying in Russia since the Cold War. We're talking a lot about crossing Rubicons this morning. I feel like we just crossed another one with mm. regard to this incident. Rebecca, thank you very much. Thanks, Rebecca. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.